this is the finished look. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to check out the other girls' channels, which of course will be linked down below. If you guys want to see more collabs with us or more videos just in general, please be sure to let us know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure for the next one we have one or two more coming. I think we have one more coming. I'm not real sure. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. So to get started, as with every great baking expedition, you got to sift your flour. Or in this case, your air spun powder. So I'm just taking my little lid here. And I'm going to sift some flour out. I need both my hands to do this, so I'm just going to do it down here. Now, you can't use too much flour, aka powder, because if you do that, then your cake is dry and crackly, and we don't want that on our skin, but you gotta really set that. So I have my flour sifted. You have to sift it. Gives it a light, airy touch to it. You can't just use straight packed flour. It's not gonna be as good. To use my Real Technique sponge, I'm just gonna dip that in there and get it nice and covered. Say a little prayer, head down, and bake under that eye. Now because I'm doing a winged eye, cat eye, I'm gonna pull that out so it'll just And when you're baking like this, it's really gonna help to set your makeup, but it's also going to help with any fallout that you might have. Now, just keep baking. You know, I've watched, I watch Food Network all the time. This is what they do. Now I already did my contour, so I gotta bake under that to really clean up that nice line there. To get started, I already primed my eyes. I'm gonna go in with a skin tone color. Any skin tone color you have, you can even use like a face powder if you want. Right. So I'm just taking a skin tone powder, something close to my skin tone. Obviously I said skin tone 25 times. I'm taking this all over the lid, all the way up to the brow bone because we used MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot to put that color down. So it's really gonna help when you go to blend out other colors, they're not going to be choppy. They're going to blend a lot easier. So to get started, I'm going to be taking a medium red shade. I'm going to be using um, Goji from the Lorac Mega 2 Pro Palette. Tap off your excess because you really just want a light flush of this to start out. When you want to deposit less color, hold your brush a little further back on the handle and it will deposit less color. The higher you hold up on your brush is going to deposit more color. Color, color, color. I'm just going to keep taking this Goji shade and building it up and blending it out. And I'm using a really large fluffy brush with this because it's just going to help me blend everything out seamlessly and not leave any harsh lines. So like I said, I had to leave my flower out because I knew I was going to need it again. So sometimes your blending will knock a little bit of your bake down. So I just go back in and pack it right back on. <coughs> I'm dying over here. Alright, next I'm going to be taking Bitten by Makeup Geek. It's just like a deeper red color. Obviously, if you're watching this channel, you know I use it all the time. I'm going to take this on my crease, but keeping it below where we just put that Goji shade. And I'm using kind of a stiff goat hair brush for this. It's not going to deposit so much color, but it's going to help pack that color on and slightly blend it out. It's not going to blend it too much because it is a stiffer brush but it will still help to blend things out. I still don't really know what I'm doing with this look, guys. I've seen something with like a red crease and I loved it, but I really don't know what I want to put on the lid. I'm going to be taking Corrupt by Makeup Geek and really tapping off the excess of it and then, this is making my nose itch, and then keeping this just on the outer corner. I'm using an angled brush, so I'm really going to get that to create that nice cat eye effect. Flicking that into the crease and onto the lid and just keep building that product up. It's better to have to go back and add more product than add too much in the beginning because it will just, it'll ruin your life. Third or first world problems. We're really taking the angle of that brush and pressing down the color and blending it toward the lid and then taking it up throughout the crease. Now you see it's just really like a gray wash of color and that's what you want. You wanna keep kind of adding that back in and deepening it up until it gets to the opacity that you want. You don't just wanna go in ham with a really heavy hand of black and then hate your life because 
You look like a raccoon. Take my fluffy brush again and blend this out. You want to be careful not to like move your brush up and down and up and down because that's going to keep pulling that black higher and higher, but keeping it right in the crease. And it's really going to help to feather that out. If you want to add more of the bitten or goji shade, you can. If you ever notice like you can't get that thick, or not the thick, the like precise winged eyeshadow that you want, flip your brush around to where your point is at the corner of your eye. And when you flick it out, you see it's giving you that cat eye effect. I really just took a mixture of all four colors, porcelain, bisque, sugar, and moonlight. And I don't even know why. I just kept tapping it on and just seeing what would happen. I like to honestly just highlight the out, outer portion of my brow bone. I don't like doing it all over. I keep feeling like I'm out of focus. See, this is why I don't do talk-throughs because I get so sidetracked while I'm filming. Okay, so my camera decided to stop filming. So what you missed out on was I went ahead and um, smoked out the bottom lash line. And I just did that with the same colors we used in the crease. I just used the goji and bitten and then I lined the bottom lash line, or not lined it, I smudged some black under the bottom lash line. And then I went ahead and I took some of the um, foiled eyeshadow in Charmed and just on my finger I placed this on my eye and it is a beautiful silver shade but it almost has like a greenish a greenish tinge to it and then I took my angled brush that had the black on it and just kind of tapped where the silver and the black meet so there isn't such a harsh line can't believe I cut all that out I looked up and I seen I wasn't recording and I almost had a heart attack the cookies are done we can take off the bake. I always start underneath of the eye first and just one swoop there gets most of it off. Do the next one. The reason I do under the eye is because I always do my contour first so I don't want to mix the dark shade in with underneath my eye where I want it to be light. Oh, I'm choking on it. Use too much flour. Too much. Not even using flour guys. It's the air spun powder. So I'm just going to go in with this embellish blush from Tarte and tap off the excess. I just kind of wanted a mauve type tone. This has a little bit of highlight or a little bit of shimmer in it, but it's not too terrible. I normally don't like shimmers in my blushes, but we're going to go in and really give us a glow to the gods. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. If I want to keep it more golden, we're going to go golden. I love Laura Geller. Gilded Honey. I'm going to go ahead and Pop that on my finger and really just shine away. It's the holidays, we like to be extra. I always put a little bit just on the tip of my nose, on my cupid's bow, and then those two little lines running to my cupid's bow. Let's make it real pretty. Make it real fancy. Liz, I'm going to be going in with LAX from ColourPop. It's kind of this mauve brown color. But of course, these colors all look different in their tubes, I think, for the most part. And I'm not lining my lips. That's super brown. Now, 